Welcome back. Uh, in the last segment, we introduced the graph inequality and we showed that for any instantaneous code, it has to satisfy the graph inequality. Uh, basically, the graph inequality is given by 2 to the Lx sum over all x uh, is less than equal to 1. Uh, and we also argue that uh, as long as a uh, given length profile uh, satisfies this graph inequality, then an instantaneous code can be found. And of course, since uh, any instantaneous code is also uniquely decodable, so given that a length profile satisfies the graph inequality, we also can uh, ensure that a uh, uniquely decodable code of this given length profile can be found. Um, however, we know that uh, the instantaneous code is a subset of the uniquely decodable code. So, yes, uniquely decodable. I'm sorry for my handwriting. Uh, so, uh, a natural question will be, we know that for any code that is instantaneous, it has to satisfy the graph inequality. Uh, but how about code that is uniquely decodable but not instantaneous? So in this segment, we'll show that uh, the graph inequality is not only the a necessary condition for instantaneous code is also a necessary condition for uniquely decodable code. Okay, to show this, let's consider a sequence of k symbols. Uh, let's call this x bar that is basically with k symbol x1, x2, and so on, xk. Uh, and uh, we denote the encoded output of x bar as as usual as c x bar is equal to c x one c x two and so on. Basically, just the concatenation of the words of x one x two up to x k. And uh, apparently, the length of the code or uh, the encoded output of x bar will be just equal to the sum of the length of the words, uh, so that's equal to Lx1 plus Lx2 and so on up to Lxk. And uh, we'll denote ML bar uh, as the number of x bar that uh, number of x bar with and call the output, or like I heard it say, that uh, whose encoded output with length L bar, or in other words, L x bar is equal to L bar. We want to see like how many uh, ML bar, ML pi is basically the number of uh, x bar such that L x bar is equal to L pi. And one thing we can uh, easily see is that um, this ML bar has to be bounded by 2 to the L bar if the code is uniquely decodable. If C is uniquely decodable, so this is rather obvious because uh, if oh sorry, it's bounded by. So if we have M L bar is bigger than two to the L pi, so M L pi is bigger than two to the L pi, that means that. We have more x that actually has uh, 
have encoded outputs. Uh, I mean, the, the we have more. Uh, we have the number of x bar that have encoded outputs with length l pi is bigger than two to the l pi. But however, if we think of like how many possible outputs with length l pi will be just two to the l pi, right? So that means that one of these x bar must be mapping to the same output and therefore like it's impossible for the code to be uniquely decodable now consider the expression of sum of x2 to the minus lx to the power k uh, this can be written as the product of Let's say uh, x1 to the minus x1 plus x2 to the minus l x2 and so on. Okay, minus l x k. So we can think of like here x1, x2, and x k are basically the the first symbol, the second symbol, up to the k symbol of an encoding incoming sequence. And then, like this summation will be part of summation will be just sum over all the x1 up to xk, and this will be 2 to minus lx1 plus up to lxk. And as we discussed earlier, this is just equal to uh, 2 to the minus lx bar, where x bar is really the sequence that contain the symbol x1 up to xk. And here also the summation over x1 and up to xk, we can really think of is really summing over all possible sequence of length k. Now, the really real check here is instead of summing all sequences of length k, let's sum over the length of the output instead. So let's denote L pi as a dummy variable that uh, is basically the length of the output. So let's say we sum over L pi from 1 up to uh, that is the maximum length of the output. And we know that the maximum, uh, let's say uh, the maximum length uh, of a code word, let's say is L, big L, then the, the basically big L is maximum of let's say L x x. Then the maximum length uh, of an of the output uh, with uh, the input as a uh, sequence of k symbols will be just k L right. So therefore, like basically, we sum over from. 1 to KL and um, actually it doesn't even matter we can even sum over from 0 actually and uh, here we have instead of 2 to minus L X bar here uh, we will have 2 to the minus L pi here. And know that we have uh, ML, uh, ML pi so many of X bar that with uh, LX bar is equal to L pi. So therefore we should, there will be like ML pi so many terms here that with uh, 2 to the Lx bar is equal to 2 to the minus L pi. So therefore, we should really multiply this guy with ML pi here. Now, as we showed earlier that this ML pi has to be less than 2 to the L pi here. So therefore, this will be less than equal to 2 to the L pi here and 2 to the minus L pi here. 
and therefore we will get KL plus 1 and uh, to summarize we will have sum over x2 to the LX will be less than equal to KL plus 1 to the one over uh, to the power of one over k, and know that k is really arbitrary here. There's no um, really restriction on the value of k. Therefore, we can just take k to infinity, and this will just give us one here. So therefore, we conclude the proof here that if a code is uniquely decodable, then it will also satisfy the graph inequality that uh, sum over uh, for sum over all x that 2 to the l uh, of 2 to the l x will be less than equal to 1.